Our next presenters are from South Lake Residential Care Village. And uh, presenting this, this morning, we have uh, Donald Squires, who's the environmental manager, and we have Carrie Overbeek, who's the life enrichment aide. So, Donald and, and Carrie. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as I said, my my name is Donald, and I'm from South Lake Village in Newmarket. Uh, we are a very large long-term care home, uh, 224 beds, uh, and approximately 250 full and part-time staff. We were approached last spring. Uh, our home was having an issue, a very high rate of MSDs uh, in the home, and we were picked out of several homes through extended care to go through the EPIC program. So we immediately hopped on board because we needed to solve this problem. Um, our, part, our partners in the program is the Public Service Health and Safety Association. So they, they had provided us with a consultant, and I believe she was a, a, a physiotherapist, so that was great. Um, the Institute for Work and Health through the University of Toronto were also there for us. And of course, our head office, Extend the Care. Before I go any further, I just wanted to give you some stats from our home. Um, in 2011-12, our home's uh, lost time for MSI injuries was uh, over 2,000 hours, 2011-2012. Um, in 20, 2013, it had dropped down to 700. After we completed the program in 2014, it went down to 22.5 hours. And our first quarter for this year, which is not quite completed yet, from January to the end of March, it's zero. Thank you. So, so our, our first steps was the uh, PSHSA consultant conducted an organizational, an organizational readiness assessment and provided an action plan. So what she did, she looked at our internal responsibility system. Uh, and she did that be, uh, because she wanted to ensure that the home had the... Um, had the uh, foundation uh, elements in place. And those foundation uh, elements were that she wanted to ensure that the home had a occupation health and safety policy, an occupational health and safety roles and, uh, roles and responsibilities, competent supervisor training, accident investigation, and a return to work program. Once she found out that we had all of these elements in place, we looked at our MSDS policy, and there's and that was our area of concern. So out of out of the um, um, out of the after looking at the MSDS program, we came up with our journey uh, elements, and that's what we were going to work on. So first of all, we. Um, we uh, developed our committees, so we developed a multidisciplinary uh, steering uh, committee, and so this committee was responsible for implementing and, uh, and the general oversight of the EPIC program. Uh, the change team, so we, did, we could have done two or three change teams, but we decided to go for one. Uh, so the change team was, pri was primarily working to identify, assess uh, hazards, as well as recommend recommendations, implement and monitor the potential solutions. PS, the, the PSHSA consultant was, used, um, was with us every month, and so they helped to us engage each group on a monthly basis. So she was very, very helpful to us. 
education component, so we did uh, both the change team and the um, uh, steering committee team um, did a two-day of education that was provided by the PSHSA consultant. Uh, so the participants required to attend a, a participatory ergonomic workshop, and we and and we learned about implementing a participatory approach and effective team team engagements and that and that was the key the participants were required to attend also to attend a hazard specific workshop and so we look and and so that's where we focused on the change teams uh, education and they were thought how to recognize assess control and evaluate hazards in the workplace the steering committee um, reported to senior to uh, senior management in the home. They uh, then we developed our terms of reference. The committee was led by the MSDS champion, and for some reason that w I was chosen to do that. Uh, the committee members included so the, st um, the steering committee members included members from the change team. So all of the members on the change team, so the workers and the, the and the uh, department head were and uh, were on the change team and uh, the, the senior management and the health and safety committee members were also a part of the change team uh, so we had educators and managers from other departments the change team were developed and and they reported to the steering committee members so they had members from the joint health and safety committee uh, committee and frontline staff workers along with supervisors. We then developed a term of reference for the change team. The next step we did was uh, a survey was uh, uh, distributed to focus on areas in the home which had higher rates of MSDS injuries and those were our dietary department, 4 East, that's a nursing floor, and 3 West. So those were, out of the seven floors in the home, these two floors where we had high rates of MS, and, but this is non-client handling though. Uh, and so those were the floors that uh, we focused on. So the change team re, re, reviewed the results from the survey. So we sent uh, the surveys, uh, the surveys, surveys out to all of the staff, and we not only like we asked them certain questions about the program, but we also asked asked them to identify any hazards in their work area and to come up with solutions. So the change team reviewed the results and looked at common things that were identified in each survey, i.e. pill crushing was one huge one, uh, garbage removal, etc. In the survey, the staff were asked to identify issues and, and potential solutions. And this was the key, like we, we asked the staff what the hazards were, because they know, and we also asked them for potential solutions to the to the hazards. The change team supervisors and workers completed an on-site MSDS recognition, assessment, control, and evaluate, and we call that RACE. I think Carrie has the form here and she wants to speak a little bit about it. So what happened was the change team went to the units affected and they spoke with the staff and we used this form to, uh, to identify hazards. So the areas that we looked at were cr pill crushing, um, getting a wheelchair or a lift over thresholds, and then we would, when we go out to take a look at these items, we would use this form, which is in your package, in another little stapled section, and we would go out and watch people do the work. And they would tell us how they were feeling, what was wrong, what needed to be fixed, and then we would fill it out, looking at force, posture, repetition, and time. Then we go back as a meeting, in a meeting, and then fill out this form, which is also in your package. And then this is where we would work on what items that we need to work at, like material, equipment, environment, and we would rate it to know how much we really needed to fix this item. And then we would make the recommendations and 
work with the management to get it fixed and most of the items that we needed to fix were easy fixes and they've been fixed. Um, there has been some items that needed a five year plan due to cost but for the most part we did fix what needed to be fixed. Thank you. No problem. So the teams went to the units, as Carrie said, and they observed the staff using this MSCS hazard identification tool attached. On this tool, they, they looked at four posture, repetition, and time. These were the areas that we um, identified and needed to work on. So there was the exterior garbage bins, clean utility rooms. They were, uh, they were clean utility rooms, but they were so cluttered that they caused all kinds of hazards. Pill crushing was another huge one. They were using the old um, portable ones where they had to crush them and, and, their, and, and the pill crushers were high on the cart. So we resolved that one quickly by getting our pharmacy who, who provided our medications, electric ones. <laughs> and that solved that problem. So each floor got a new electric pill crusher. Tub room transfers. Um, there was an issue with um, with the door, the t the uh, tub room door. When you opened it, uh, you would see the PSW with a client in a in a wheelchair, and they had to open the door and hold the door open with their back or or their foot while they're wheeling backing in. Uh, so uh, the solution that we arrived at for that one was that we just got little door stoppers that cost less than ten dollars and you know of course being long-term care we had to ensure that uh, it was uh, that the fire department would approve that because they don't like doors to be propped open so I called our local fire chief and and he said okay it's great uh, so that solved that problem. The uh, dietary carts was another issue where uh, it was quite heavy because we don't have dishwashers upstairs. So uh, it was a, a problem for the dietary aides moving all the dishes down to the main floor to the dish room. And there was an issue with the, uh, the car. One of the issues with the carts is that it was too heavy. Uh, another issue was that the wheels were very small and it was getting stuck in the elevator trucks so they were having to lift up these huge heavy trucks. So to solve that we got new trucks with bigger wheels which solved the issue with the elevator trucks. Also in a five year plan, we, uh, you know, and we bought this back to, to the staff and said in, in five years we can have dishwashers on each floor. But they understood that that's going to take time and money and budgeting. Uh, the door, door thresholds, that was, uh, that's an issue where in the resident rooms we have carpet and in the washroom it's a hard floor and so there's a transition piece at the front door so the staff are having a hard time putting the residents over the trash hole and, and again the fix for that is a long term uh, thing because we have the budget for it because we have to remove the carpet and put hard floors on all of the rooms so that transition is, is, is not there anymore. Pot washing sink, there was an issue with staff in the dietary um, uh, having to bend over, you know, the, I don't know who makes these sinks for people, but it's not the people who have to stand there and work. So they'd be bent down all, all day washing pots. So we just got them, we just got a company to, to build an insert. And so it, um, the, so when you put the dishes on the plate, it, goes down and as you take the pots and that up, it raises, raises up, up due to the less weight on it. So they don't have to um, be bending over, it just comes up to them. Uh, the other issue was transporting clients, tub, shower rooms. So we, we, we have some really heavy clients that they would have to get out of bed with the use of a lift, put them into a wheelchair, wheel them to the tub shower room, use a lift, put them in a shower chair, shower them and then do the same thing in reverse. So we ended up um, buying two um, lifts called a Moranti and the, we were lucky that we're a charitable home so we were able to get some donations from our local, uh, um, what's that group? 
I, it was from the hospital foundation, and uh, and we were able to buy one for each floor that have had all of the he a, uh, heavy clients. So now they can take them from the bed, the clients. And this is also a transport uh, lift, and so they can, and it's motorized, so they don't even have to push it to the tub or to the shower and do their work and put them right back in bed again. Five minutes. Five? We have five minutes. Uh, so some of the barriers, there was lack of management support, lack of employee involvement, insufficient time granted for participation, uh, conflicting demands, in intervention versus work, budget constraints, re and resistance to change. Solutions to uh, barriers, we selected the right participants, and mo uh, motivated to participate, team-oriented, and, and demonstrated le uh, leadership. So some of the people that we picked for the teams were former health and safety members, they were certified, and they had worked years in some of our safety groups. So those types of people we picked for the change team. Senior management co uh, commitment and organizational in investment. So it, it was an investment for us to do this program. So yes, senior management were committed to it. Uh, ensuring a a adequate time to attend training sessions and implement the program. So we made sure that the department heads, you know, uh, gave the workers time to do the work. Maintain momentum in order to maintain interest, so stay on track. We ensured that we had to meet our deadlines. And that's key, because the staff need to keep, we have to keep the interest. Staff education around the program and how it will improve our way of working as well as a better understanding of our work. So we did a lot of staff education about the MSD program or the EPIC program through the whole home. We work safer and smarter, uh, good marketing using staff newsletters, pay stubs, attachments, postings in staff lunchrooms and to update staff on progress. Involvement of the Joint Health and Safety Committee was very important and it's still a part of their standing agenda even today. Change teams began brainstorming solutions along with the staff from, other, uh, from, from the affected floors and they used the form that uh, Carrie had talked about. We looked at people, equipment, material, environment, process. Change teams made recommendations to improve to the steering committee and then the steering committee took this to, to uh, senior management. Um, we captured before and after pictures and that's good because the staff needed to see that the change was happening. Uh, we focused on good interventions, good I I implementation tactics to achieve good outcomes. And that was the form that Terry had, uh, Carrie had already um, talked about. Were there any questions from anybody or, and please no hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> None? Thank you very much.